Our second exercise will, will be with the independent samples t-test. Now for this <clears throat> exercise we're using the, the family data set and uh, this data set has information on some cohabitating couples. Some of whom are married and some of whom are unmarried. So here we can see that uh, the number of siblings, these are the number of siblings of the couples. Um, so that is, is recorded here. The number of children that the couples have together uh, is listed there. The number of pets that they own and whether they are married or unmarried. Uh, that would be the, the group. And if we switch the value labels, we can see that that is dichotomously coded such that married is one and unmarried is zero. The researcher whether, wonders whether unmarried partners and married partners have the same number of children, or if one type of cohabitant couple tends to have more children than the other. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, come up with a research question and we'll follow um, one of these formats. So we can either say, is there a difference in the number of children between married and unmarried cohabitating couples? Or we can say, is marriage related to the number of children for cohabitating couples? Um, I think the first one sounds better, so I'll use that. Now I need to add the null and alternate hypotheses. With the last exercise, I used this style, where mu equals mu. So this time I'll use this style. Um, this is mu of one group minus mu of the other group equals zero. Um, and this is actually appropriate in particular because of the phrasing of my question I asked, is there a difference? So let me expand this page so that I can get to the equation button. My hypothesis is that mu minus mu equals zero. Now I'll go in and add the scripts. My null hypothesis is that mu of 1 minus mu of group 2 equals 0. For the alternate hypothesis, mu 1 minus mu 2 is not equal to zero. <clears throat> All right, now I need to run that analysis. So now I've opened SAS. I've got the file here that I used for exercise one already. And I'm just going to go ahead and add exercise two right to that same file. So it's helpful to open the documentation uh, just so I have it to refer to. So I'll go ahead and do that. So there's my syntax for the PROC T test statement as well as the other parts of the um, command there. Now when I'm defining groups with a t-test I need to use the class statement. Uh, this defines one of the variables as a classification variable um, such that it will analyze the groups separately. So 
the variable that I'm using to define the groups is marital and um, if we double click on that table again we can open that up to see marital is the variable name and that's dichotomously coded so that defines our groups then the variable that I want to compare is children and of course then run the command now just to save myself the trouble of seeing everything from exercise one I'm gonna highlight the code to run the analysis for exercise two and click run we've got descriptives for the groups up top um, we've got the t-test itself here in the third table and we've got the test for quality of variances now what's what's interesting about this is that SAS uses a different test uh, for quality of variances than SPSS uh, SAS uses the folded F test um, and this also tests the null hypothesis that the variances are equal so a significant result means that we're rejecting the null hypothesis so a significant result means that the variances are not equal so when I look at this here the folded F test is significant with a p-value of 0 0.0006 um, we can reject the null hypothesis variances are unequal so when we look at the t-test table up here there's two rows here that report the the t-test the first row is when we assume that the variances are equal oddly that test is significant the second row which uses the method necessary for unequal variances that test is non-significant our alpha value is 0 0.05 so 0 0.06 is not lower than our alpha value so we don't reject the null so let me go ahead and uh, paste that output Sorry for a moment there, I had uh, material left in this file from the SPSS video. So let me paste my SAS output here. And now I'm ready to interpret these results uh, in the space below. So I'll bring up my notes document. I've got my boilerplate text down here. So because my folded F test for equality of variances was significant, I have to reject the null hypothesis that I've got equal variables and instead report the line that says unequal variances. So uh, this means that my test is non-significant. So I'll use this boilerplate text here. So there's no difference between the number of children that married cohabitating couples have. And unmarried cohabitating couples. So the mean for the unmarried ones is 1.4. And the standard deviation is 1.6. Now, filling in the 
report for the t-statistic, note that the degrees of freedom is calculated in a different way. We actually do need to include the decimal portion of that value. So 21.71 are the degrees of freedom. The t-value is 1.95. Now it's reported as a negative number because the married couples were listed sec second in the procedure and they have more children. So it subtracted the number of married, or the number of children that married couples have from the number of children that unmarried couples have. It doesn't actually make sense to talk about negative children. So I'm going to report the absolute value. Uh, which is just 1.95. Now the p-value here is equal to 0 0.64. The observed mean difference So the effect size calculator still has the numbers in it that I entered from the SPSS video, but the mean and standard deviation for group one are here. There are 18 members of group one. And then I've got the mean and standard deviation for group two. There's 32 members there. Um, so the effect size is 0.69. Um, which, according to the interpretation guidelines, is a medium effect. And I cite Cohen there as justification for the way that I've interpreted that effect size. So, there is no difference between the number of children that married cohabitating couples have and unmarried cohabitating couples. And I've got my descriptives there. Reported the T from the uh, Satherweight method with unequal variances, which is non-significant, report the mean difference and the confidence interval of that, and a medium effect size. So that's how we'll do exercise two in SAS. Why don't you go ahead and give a shot to uh, the homework exercise on your own.